Welcome back, everyone. You know, it's always so fascinating to see an unusual bird in your backyard. Last fall, we were all mesmerized by brown thrushes eating on our suet feeder. This week, Stephen Case from Northern Kansas shares his rare bird sighting. He's had a Scots Oriole eating at his squirrel buster nut feeder since December 5th. There were two things that surprised me about this bird. First of all, Scots Orioles are southern birds. You know, even during their breeding season, they don't travel as far north as Kansas. They stay mostly in Texas and in the south. And secondly, these birds are insects and nectar and fruit eating birds. So seeing one on a nut feeder eating shelled peanuts is just out of this world. So if you're thinking about feeding your birds high energy foods like nuts and suet, now is the best time to do that it's because food is scarce and you just never know who is gonna show up in your backyard. Right before the holidays, I dropped off my son at his school. And as I was walking back home, all of a sudden I heard this really loud calling of crows. So I stopped and filmed this. And then I sent the video to David to get his take on it. Hi from sunny Baja, Tatiana. Your video showing the five or so American crows chasing after that single common raven is not only interesting, but your question as to why the crows are attacking that raven is very timely mainly because it was precisely the subject of a scientific paper published by two ornithologists at the Cornell Laboratory of Ornithology just five years ago in 2017. Before we get into an explanation of the behavior, let's take a peek at the two closely related adversaries, arguably the most intelligent birds on the planet, at least in my books. Besides that, and the fact they both sport black plumages, that's where the similarity ends. Common ravens are considerably larger than American crows, are about as close to being a bird of prey as a bird can get without actually being one. It has a lot to do with their massive bills, which are powerful enough to crack open the skull of a good-sized rabbit or hare. But while ravens are known to interact socially, especially in the search of carrion, they don't flock together in the same way that crows do. In short, what the crows lack in terms of weaponry, they make up for in numbers. As an example, several crows have been observed attacking and consuming a single dove or pigeon and leaving nothing but a pile of feathers on the ground. Your five crows were similarly using this mobbing behavior to drive the raven out of their area. And for two reasons. Ravens have been known to eat the eggs, nestlings and fledglings of crows and even adults debilitated in some way. Second, the two corvid species often feed upon carrion and sometimes serve as competitors. Thus, they can't tolerate one another being in the same neighborhood. So the crows use their mob mentality to harass and annoy ravens mercilessly to the point where they simply leave. According to the authors of that paper, 97% of the time the crows are the aggressors, especially during the breeding season. It's apparently a growing problem too because ravens are no longer killed by humans and their increased numbers, five-fold in the past 20 years, put them more and more into close proximity with the crows. Over the years, I've read, written, and taught about bird brains, especially about the controversy over which birds are smarter, corvids or parrots. Whatever is true, one thing is certain. Both of these avian groups are highly intelligent, equaling primates in solving puzzles. According to some studies, it might come down to the number of neurons in the bird's forebrains, some songbirds and parrots having even more than monkeys. But is cognitive performance really linked to the total number of neurons? One recent paper comparing primates and corvids and pigeons suggests this not to be the case, while other studies argue that having a greater number of neurons in the pallium, which is a specific part of the avian forebrain, is linked to better capabilities in memory learning, reasoning, and problem solving. But a newly published study raises some, some new questions. For instance, what's really important, the relative number of neurons or the absolute number? In other words, does being big-bodied and thus having a larger brain translate to being smarter? To seek an answer, the research team estimated the number of neurons in the pallions of 111 species of birds, and then related the numbers to over 4,400 innovative ways that the birds feed themselves. Here's what they concluded in a nutshell, I mean eggshell. First, while higher numbers of neurons in the pallium did relate to greater innovative behavior, 
the more important aspect was how those neurons were connected to various networks in the brain overall. Second, the big-bodied birds with larger brains were not necessarily smarter. And third, the longer the young of a given bird species spends developing in the nest, the more neurons get deposited in the pallium. And the young of both the larger corvids and parrots fall into that category. But it still begs the question, which group of birds is smarter? Personally, I'm still betting on the crows and ravens. Just like Dr. Bird, I love Corvus. They're so smart. And whenever I have a chance to stop and watch them, I sure do that. So this episode, we're talking about American crows. Unfortunately, they are feeder shy, so I can't really watch them there for hours, you know, at my feeders. But sometimes they do come and grab a drop seed here and there, but they don't stay for a very long time. I think they're actually a lot better at cleaning up the mess that my kids leave when we eat outside or when raccoons get into a compost bin and leave some scraps behind. In the spring, I find it a bit disturbing to watch them attack blue jays nests, but then blue jays turn around and attack a robin's nest and a raccoons, a number of hawks and owls attack American crow's nests as well. I guess that's just a cycle of life. Here on the East Coast, American crows are often confused with fish crows, which are smaller in size, but still it's not that easy to tell them apart. You have to really listen to their calls because fish crows have this distinct nasal kind of a congested call. So listen to this, that's a fish crow. And that's an American crow. American crows are such an abundant bird species that they are pretty much found everywhere in the United States and Southern Canada all year around. At the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, they were not very popular birds. They were actually hunted and driven away from the countryside into the city where it was a little bit safer for them to live. American crows are ground feeding birds, so they need open habitat to forage. You know, they don't really venture into deep woods and prefer to hang out sort of on the edge of a forest. They are omnivorous and basically will eat anything they can find. Human food scraps are very popular, so are bird eggs and nestlings, and they have been observed to use tools to get their food. I just learned that they will chase and kill European starlings and house sparrows. Why these European non-native bird species? I'm not sure. American crows are migratory. They move further north to breed, but unlike songbirds, they migrate during the day. They only have one brood per season, and they don't actually start breeding until they're about two years old, and they often have helpers, which are juvenile crows from the previous year when rearing their young. Well, some of us flew into the new year while others are taking their time to get there. Let's check out the top five of our on the move photo contest. Here's the third place, the second place, and the grand prize winner. Congratulations, everybody. Just a quick reminder, if you do take the first place, we ask you not to participate for the rest of the year to give everyone a chance. Next month is February. It's all about love and cuteness, so our theme is too cute. Well, that's it. That's all for now. Let us know if you've seen any unusual birds at your bird feeders this year so far. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.